Sports. We've got Black Friday basketball action for you here at Thompson Bowling Arena, Knoxville, Tennessee. We're served up an in-state battle. The Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles travel to Knoxville to face the 15th-ranked Tennessee Volunteers. And we welcome you courtside with Steve Hamer. Andy Brock here with you. Also with Casey Funderburg on the sidelines. We want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving Day. We appreciate you taking time out of your Friday afternoon. Steve, you take a look at this Tennessee side. Two critical games out of the way this past weekend, including big win against North Carolina. Yeah, you talk about early big-time matchups. They didn't play so well, didn't fare so well in the first matchup against a tough, well-coached Villanova basketball team. But then they bounced back against a well-coached, albeit first-year coach, North Carolina basketball team. But to beat a blue blood in an early season tournament is big time. I think that's the key, Steve, that bounce back, ending the week in Connecticut on a high note. You see four bowls in double figures. First win against North Carolina since the 40s. Yeah, first win, you know, and, and it felt like for the last several matchups, Tennessee's kind of had their number. But were it not for a turnover here, a turnover there, a missed shot, you know, Tennessee could have been 3-0 and in their last three. But kudos to the coaching staff for bouncing back so incredibly quickly, less than 24 hours, and beating a, a highly regarded North Carolina basketball club. It's a young Tennessee side. Haven't really had to respond like that in just a night's rest as they look to carry that big win against the top 25 Tar Heels team through the Thanksgiving weekend in a very formidable in-state battle against Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles. We are about underway. Tennessee, nine straight wins over Tennessee Tech. And look to kick off Turkey Weekend action in Knoxville. It's Kamwa and Sila tip at midcourt. And we are underway. A battle. And reeled in for the Golden wow. Eagles immediately. Snatched away by freshman star Kennedy Chandler, and we're underway here in Knoxville. Yeah, that's just one of the things that he does so very, very well. You know, you talk about the scoring, you talk about his prowess to put the ball in the hoop, but it's the defense on the other end that most people are really excited about. Here's Vescovy, free throw line, and a deep three from Chandler to start things off. Kumwa crashing the boards, loose ball, Fulkerson's there. Chandler pump fake drive now. Little floater can't kiss it off the glass. And Tennessee Tech will hold it down. And this is the lineup for the Golden Eagles under head coach John Pelfrey, along with their favorite sides. It's Thanksgiving, so we're still in the mood. As you see, Deontay Wood, Keyshawn Davidson, Junior Clay, Amadou Sila, and Mamadou Diara. Yeah, Junior Clay is a man after my own heart. The candy yams, you know? Him and Mamadou Diara, the sweet potatoes. Man, I'm all about that. Absolutely is. Bailey fires from the corner for Tennessee. Another offensive board for the Bulls. Rick Barnes really needs to figure out a way to get Victor Bailey to score the basket. You know, he struggled early on this season, and that's what his knack is. You know, that's what they really need him to do is fill up that three. He hasn't needed to do it on a consistent level just yet. Victor Bailey Jr., 3 of 14 this weekend from the three-point line. This is first by Kenny Chandler there for the first points of the ball game. Tennessee a quick 2-0 lead. Another steal from Chandler. That's the second time he's been able to pick the Golden Eagles pockets. And here is the starting lineup for the Vols. A couple of side items as well. See Fulke, the Pals Peachy T. Right on brand there from John Fulkerson. The rest of the squad. Some good looking sides there. Kennedy Chandler is now 0 for 2 for the three point line. The thing that I'm looking at at Kennedy Chandler, and you look at the dressings and all that stuff, man, that makes me hungry right now. But with Kennedy Chandler, it looks like he's really not got his legs for his first two shots. Barely getting off the floor, which is atypical uh, and, and sort of an aberration of what you've seen thus far this season, where he gets great height, great loft. So, you know, maybe right now. Little nerves playing into it. Maybe the, the belly's full of that dressing <laughs> right now. He'll run that off and, and look to him for two big things to, this afternoon. And you're right. Chandler has been nothing but atypical freshman since day one here on Rocky Top. Two weeks in, he's already won a freshman of the week honor in the Southeastern Conference and sitting about a cool, crisp 14 points per game as well. Yeah, I only dreamed about doing things like that when I was a freshman. I got to the quarters. Vescovy Guarded closely by Deontay Wood, and Wood wins that battle. It'll be a turnover for the Bulls. 
Good defense by the Golden Eagles there. You know, the, the Golden Eagles, you, you look at their team, and they've got good size. They've got good quickness. Haven't shot the ball well from the perimeter, and we'll talk about that shortly. But this team is not going to back down from the Tennessee basketball team because a win, Andy, would make their entire season. Work goes up for the shot. No good. You have to go back to 1996, the last time the Golden Eagles took down this Tennessee side. These two teams went at it this time last year in what was a dismantlement win favoring a 10th-ranked Tennessee team at that point. Another turnover the ball to your side. Same part of the court, that time off Victor Bailey Jr. Yeah, Victor Bailey getting his first start. You know, perhaps some nerves playing into it. Tennessee looks like they're going to be without a couple of three guys this afternoon due to different ailments. But, uh, you know, you look for Victor Bailey to have a big-time breakout game. Balls at this point without Justin Powell in the starting lineup. Yes. Daniel Ramsey able to cash in Tennessee Tech's first point, so we're knotted up at two. Daniel caught that ball in the sweet, stop, sweet spot. High post, turned around and put it in. Bailey right wing feeds it into the paint. John Fulkerson, the six-year man, goes up strong with the left hand and gets it to go. Good for John. You know, he works really hard to get to the sweet spot on that post, and then he goes over that right shoulder with a baby hook there. Davidson at the free throw line. For Junior Clay, team's leading scorer a season ago. Three-time All-OBC. The step back three from Diara, the big wow. fella, gets wow. it to go. How about Mamadou, man? That's a great looking shot. A little hesitation there. Step back for the three. He's a 35% three point shooter. First season with the Golden Eagles, and he's averaging about 12 points a game. A huge addition from the Golden Eagles from Cincinnati. It's the Tennessee Tech side that brings in a wealth of transfers from the transfer portal. Really up the depth on this team, making it more competitive practice, turning over to a lot of guys fight for minutes early. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the transfer portal. It's the great equalizer, Andy. When you have teams, even at this particular level, as Santiago comes away with a big time steal. What a Check move. Vescovi. Wow. Slice and dice finishes and have, it off. We got to make sure we say it right, right? That's right. Vescovi. Vescovi. We'll, we'll have more yeah. on that with, yeah. with Casey Funderburg, but yeah. Pronunciation, best yeah, that's what yeah. we're going with here. Yeah, we got to make sure we get that right. But, you know, going back to the transfer portal, it is the great equalizer. It gives guys a chance to play for other schools right away. And, it, 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 and kudos to them coming up with that rule. Guys want to play. That's what it comes down to. Very strange year a season ago. Both these teams largely affected by COVID-19 and injuries in the early going. It's good to have these type of non-conference atmospheres again. In-state rivalry, in-state matchup here on Thanksgiving weekend. Fulkerson somehow ends up with that one, and that was a gift. Never leave the man with the ball. You know, Fulkerson gets that, hustle, uh, you know, off the floor. He's looking to pass it out, and they left him. Tennessee by three, a scramble for the ball, and it's going to go out of bounds. Tennessee Tech way will be the first break on the court. Tennessee leading by three, and when we come back, we will hear more with Casey as she catches. What he does care about is being a leader on this team and doing what he needs to do on the floor, and he showed that. He was a leader in Tennessee's win over UNC last weekend. Santi said Coach Barnes really called the team out during film after Villanova, so they took what he said to heart, and they knew that they needed to have a chance in mindset. So after the win over UNC, Coach Barnes said he was impressed with how locked in his team was. And Santiago's performance last weekend also landed him a spot on the Hall of Fame tip-off all-tournament team after averaging 20 points over the weekend. Well, absolutely, Casey. Uh, ups and downs all weekend for Tennessee at Connecticut, but Santi was one that really just stayed up the whole time. It's an all-tournament team, 20 points per game. He really is locked in, Steve. He really is locked in, and you can tell that he's been locked in uh, you know, for the uh, start of the season, but it goes back beyond that. You know, you talk to Coach Barnes about the summer and the spring and the chemistry that these guys have. You know, it, it's a lot different because last year was a COVID year, obviously, but Santi was one of those leaders who worked his rear end off to get in better shape, handles the ball a lot better, and has better foot speed this year. And Coach Rick Barnes has consistently said that Vescovi has been the most improved player on this roster. Vescovi, Vescovi, whatever you pronounce it, doesn't matter. 
if he's put 16 points a game, you're going to take that. You're going to take that all day. And then you, you bring in someone like, like Zakai Ziegler, who puts so much pressure on the defense, gets all the way to the rack. At that size, he still has the abil ability to finish. Let's talk about it, an explosion this weekend against North Carolina. That is Zakai Ziegler, career high, 18 points in what was just his fourth game in his collegiate career in what was a small ball type of lineup that Rick Barnes went with against North Carolina. Yeah, very surprising to me that he went with Santiago Kennedy Chandler and Zakai Ziegler for, you know, the multitude of that particular basketball game. But I know that it caught North Carolina off guard. They just could not match up. So look forward to seeing that more and more this season. There's Kamwa to the rim, and he gets it to go. His first points of the action today. I really like Olivier Kamwa. I like the fact that he's had a bit of an epiphany, if you will, this year. Light bulbs really come on, being more assertive, more aggressive. Jumper from Ramsey, other end, off the mark. Tennessee, they've made four of their last four attempts. Currently hold a five-point lead. Here's Ziegler, driving right side, tries to toss it back out. And here's Bailey Jr. picks it up, collects, and can't finish. Good pass by Zakai Ziegler. Sometimes when you catch it in rhythm, you can go up with it. Almost led to a turnover. Well, he goes up with one hand off the mark. Ziegler wants to run. Bounce pass to Bailey Jr. A little reversal finish. Yeah, good pass by Zakai. Great finish by BJ. Tennessee's on a 6-0 run. Hard contact at the other end. And that'll be on Tennessee. Bailey Jr. gets the foul. Well, when you look at someone like Zakai Ziegler, who is diminutive in stature, you know, he doesn't need to get to the heart of the paint. Great bounce pass. Victor Bailey utilized the basket as a as a shot-blocking defender, if you will, and, and was able to lay it up with his strong hand. And the way Ziegler plays, it is fearless. You showed that against North Carolina. 27 minutes in that game. He had just 30 combined in the prior three games. He's really stepped up in Rick Barnes' eyes. And I think that Coach Barnes really loves the fact that he plays with a great amount of moxie. Eagle dishes for Bailey Jr. Still trying to get in that rhythm as Victor Bailey Jr. is off the mark again there. Other way, come the Golden Eagles. Victor Bailey wave it off. That's a charge. So no basket at the offensive end, but he turns around and gets the charge. Yeah, you know, sometimes players will let their offensive explosion or lack thereof, you know, adjust you know, and, 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 and make All things way, happen that Eagles, you don't want to see on the defensive end. So Victor Bailey did a great job of not being down. You know, I'm missing some shots. I'm going to get a charge and help my team out in other ways. Turn things over the other way. Huntley Hatfield with the ball. Chandler feed into Euros Plopchich. Goes up strong, one hand, and a smooth finish for the big belt. How about you, Euros? Crab dribble, going up over the strong shoulders, left shoulder, putting it in with the baby hook. Bobzich, three and a half points per game, that relief off the bench for Tennessee in his third season with the balls. Tennessee Tech trying to claw back. They face an early seven-point deficit. That way, out for Davidson, fires a three from the left wing, and he gets it to go. Great shot by Keyshawn Davidson. You know, Tennessee made them work for every dribble, every pass, but that's a great-looking shot by Keyshawn Davidson. Davidson, the team's leading, scored through five games, 13.4 points per game, had 28 in one game earlier this season. Went off a double-double against Lipscomb as well. It's a team that really fought hard in a Tuesday win against a really good Lipscomb side team in which they were down 14 points at one point. A little bit of a slow start, kind of been a theme for Tennessee Tech. They clawed back, finally got the three-point shot working. Yeah, you talk about a slow start. You know, if I recall right, they went 0 for 27 in one stretch in terms of shooting from the perimeter. So for them to close out a game and start to shoot the ball a lot better, it's so much better for them. Well, they're hanging around early. We're halfway through the first. Tennessee, the home side, just 16 to 12. And Zakai Ziegler, we've already mentioned the career-high outing he had against North Carolina. 27 minutes, 7 for 10. Just a great story from Zakai Ziegler, and he's already making progress in just those four games. Yeah, it's quickly becoming a fan favorite. You know, he's the shortest, you know, ball basketball player since 1979. And to be able to do what he does, finishing at the rim, at the cup, 
That's absolutely fantastic for this yeah, young man. Absolutely. And for more on Sakai and his impact already, we sit it to Casey. Well, guys, six months ago, Zakai Ziegler was pretty under the radar until his AAU team played in the Peach Jam. He was playing against some of the top prospects in the country and absolutely dominating on the floor. So obviously that caught Tennessee's eye. They offered him. Once they offered him, he actually reclassified so he could join the squad this season. And Coach Barnes said that he likes how fearless Zakai is when he plays. And he's actually one of the most competitive guys on the team and has one of the highest basketball IQs on the team. Hey, talk about having a chip on your shoulder, Steve. No offers coming into the summer prior to not technically the year you're supposed to start collegiate play. You reclassify, but still, no offers at that point, and all of a sudden a good performance it fuels you. But a chip on your shoulder, surely, for the guy's eagle. Yeah, just an absolute. I mean, you hit the nail right on the head. When you play with that chip on your shoulder, that New York moxie, that fearlessness, you know, you, you look at him, he is is not afraid to take the big time shot. He is not afraid to take over a basketball team, which is so different for a young kid coming in and learning a system right away. He's already filled up the stat sheets this afternoon. Three minutes, two points, two rebounds, and two assists. He'll fire the three right out of the break. Can't get it to go. Tennessee so far an over from the three point arc over five so far yeah very reminiscent of what you saw last saturday against villanova where they did not shoot the ball well and it came back to bite them because villanova again well coached great guard play and it took advantage of ut size or lack thereof from their perimeter players rizama Silla, one of the highly most highly effective players in the ovc leads the team field goal percentage very patient finish from the big man Ziegler dumps it down to Fulkerson, a little back screen cut, and it rolled around and in. Huntley Hatfield might have had a part of that. Yeah, I think he did, and that's what he's doing right now. Brandon Huntley Hatfield, you know, that, that, he's going to emerge, obviously, as a superstar. He's got an NBA body already, but the fact that he is tenacious around the glass, does not quit, you know, that's going to get him more and more playing time. Jemai Mayshack pokes it loose. Tennessee running the other way. Chandler tried to dump it into his fellow freshman. And gives it away. That'll be another Tennessee turnover. Yeah, and I don't think Coach Barnes is very happy with Kennedy Chandler. But if you go back and you look at that, Kennedy Chandler, a little slight of hand, got it to him. He just wasn't ready to catch that. Now, on this end, this is when, you, when, when you're when you a big guy like that, man. You put the ball on the floor and you turn around and you put it in with a jump hook. But on the other end, anything you can do, I can do better. Brandon Huntley Hatfield not settling to be boxed out, Andy. Yeah, Huntley Hatfield, four and a half points per game in the early going. 23 minutes against North Carolina. Just got a little fingertip in on that one. Just provide more and more in his first year. It's a very young Tennessee team, very young Tennessee Tech team. These are a lot of newcomers on both sides, still trying to get familiar. Mix and match, sees what works. Yeah, mix and match here. But you look at the fact that even one year ago, Tennessee was able to defeat Tennessee Tech 1 on 349. You knew it wasn't going to be that type of basketball game today. And right now, you know, eight minutes left, nine minutes left, Tennessee Tech's in this thing. Nuclear baseline, the ball movement from Tennessee. These are two very good passing teams. Fulkerson hands off to Chandler. Shot clock expiring off the backboard. So it'll be Tennessee Tech ball. Great defense from the Golden Eagles. Wow. That was really good defense from the Golden Eagles when they closed out particularly quickly. Uh, you know, Kennedy Chandler had a high ball screen, thought he would get open on that, and just did not knock it down. This is a team that forced 22 turnovers on a good, usually disciplined Lipscomb side, a Lipscomb team that has been to the tournament several times in the last few years. 22 forced turnovers, a good defense. Tennessee Tech, they also know how to pass the ball as well, leading the conference in assist to turnover ratio. Davidson just had to get it off. Good defense, both sides. Neither can buy a bucket before the shot clock expires. Yeah, back to back shot clock violations. You know, this game is probably going to come down, Andy, to who can settle in quickest. You know, you, you certainly think that Tennessee, uh, with, with the, you know, uh, higher five, with the higher stars, you think they would settle down fairly quickly, but Tennessee Tech, man, they're just hanging around. You know, all because of their, their well coach, Coach Pelfrey, Pelfrey. We hadn't talked about him just yet, but he is a wonderful coach, wonderful background in terms of basketball knowledge. So they're going to stick around. 
And that's been one of the things that John Pelfrey has been preaching to his side, a team that hasn't been known for fast starts this year. They got down 13 points in a game against Memphis to open the season. They've been practicing to try to be a fast-starting team like they haven't been this season. And right now, they are hanging close just down two as we head late in the first half. They're making things tough in the post as well. You know, nothing's going to be easy for John Fulkerson. Tennessee, they have some work to do just up to 18-16 in-state. Tennessee Tech keeping things close with the 15th team in the nation, trailing by two with just eight to go in half number one, and they are led by John Pelfrey, his third season, 16 total wins as a Golden Eagle, and his resume, Steve, goes on and on and on. A lot of SEC stops, obviously a legend at Kentucky back in the day. Yeah, legend at the, at the University of Kentucky. You talk about a not down shooter. I mean, just a sharp shooter, man. I think he could probably fill it up right now. You know, he's still a young guy. Um, and obviously, I think he's going to lead Tennessee Tech in the right direction. He's got them off to a really good start. Uh, got some great athletes via the transfer portal. Look for big things for them in their conference this year. And just so much to unpack about that resume. For more on Coach Pelfrey, we'll get into Casey. Well, during the 2015-2016 season, Coach Pelfrey was an analyst for ESPN and SEC Network games, and he would cover some of Coach Barnes's games. And he said he just really loved how Coach Barnes would spend extra time with him, talking about his team, giving him some notes for the broadcast so he said he loves that they're getting to play the volunteers today and he has great respect for coach Barnes there's not many people that could say they've played they've coached and they were an analyst in the SEC I mean he's done all three that's the trifecta yeah he's done all three man you know if he comes over here I hate to tell you Andy I'm gonna have to give up the headset you know we got Andrea Carter here as well today I mean, you know, I, I'm li we're living in the – I don't know about you. I'm living in the shadows right now. We're the second string right here. Those, <laughs> those are the stars that you just mentioned. Let's get Coach Pelfrey over here. He, he has the talent at all three aspects, and he's got this Golden Eagles team headed in the right direction. He knew it wasn't going to be a day one type of build, but you really got to work at these things. I think he's found a good home in Cookville. Found a great home in Cookville. You know, expectations aren't going to be to where they go to the Sweet 16 every single year, but the fact that they're very competitive, they've got talent right now, and they're only going to grow. And the lovely folks at the Tennessee Sports Information Department compiled all-time coaching, playing as an analyst. Tennessee is 17-24 and 24 when Coach Pelfrey is somewhere in the building. doesn't matter what he's doing. <laughs> Something tells me the SID from Tennessee, Tom Satobiak, his, his fingerprints are all over that. And graduate assistant Wyeth Wilson also just finding all those key stats for us, making our jobs a little easier. But yeah, that's yeah. that's a good one. You don't usually have a unique resume like Coach Belfry. And he really has set a, somewhat of a family foundation here where his guys are bonded. He's got a lot of newcomers. It's tough to really pull that in so quickly before the season starts. Yeah, and it's tough to build chemistry like that. You know, coming off of last year's COVID year where you didn't have fans in the stands and you didn't have the full uh, season of conditioning to work out and all of those good things. It's hard to build that rapport with your players, but they've bought in, obviously, with the way that they're playing. And you look right now, with a free throw here from Petway, they could be just down a bucket. Now Petway, one of those transfers, couldn't quite get it to go. Golden Eagles take it back over. Junior Clay a drive. Feeds in for Wood. Wood turn around just off the glass. Offensive board fighting underneath. And a quick whistle. That's going to be on Tennessee. Yeah, you know, Mamadou, uh, Diara, man, coming to that glass, you know, with, with – with a bad mentality, man. You know, I'm not going to be denied. So kudos to him for getting to that offensive glass. You know, you talk about the fact that I'm not going to be denied in terms of I'm not going to let someone box me out. I'm going to overcome that, fight around, and find a way to help my team. He's earned these pair of free throws, Diara. And no good on the first. No free throws from Tennessee so far this afternoon, but Tennessee Tech one for three at the line. Well, Andy, if you're Tennessee Tech, how do you find ways to not only stay in a basketball game like this, but find ways to win? One of those ways in, in which you look at is that Tennessee has 12 rebounds. Tennessee Tech has 11. 
So that is one of the equalizing factors that if you're Tennessee Tech, if you're Coach Pelfrey, you want one of those things, whether it's assists to turnover ratio, knocking down threes, or staying close in a rebounding battle that could help you win a game like this. And Steve, the identities of both of these teams a lot this season has been the ability to crash the offensive boards create those second chance points. Tennessee's top 15 in the nation in that. Tennessee Tech leads the OVC. Tennessee, they're all about those second chance points this season with Rick Barnes. All about the second chance points. And there again, Kennedy Chandler. That's his third look from the three-point line that was short. That one didn't even draw iron. And now both sides, a little bit of a cold stretch. It's been three minutes since Tennessee Tech had been able to buy a field goal at the free throw, but Tennessee, one of their last seven at the moment. Yeah, Amadou Sela, you know, Tennessee Tech is utilizing that high pick and roll with Sela rolling to the basket, and Santiago had no choice but to foul him to put him at the line. Sela with four points in the early going. He's good on the first one. The longer Tech hangs around, too, Andy. I'm telling you, you know, things usually work out in a team's favor when they're a big underdog on the road, hostile environment. They are all tied up, 20 apiece. Six minutes to go in the first half. A much different field in the 103-49 win for Tennessee last year. Here's Kamwa. That'll get the crowd going. Get the team rolling. That'll get the team rolling. That takes the lid off the basket when it comes to the three-point line. But kudos to Kumwa. You know, he is one of the best three-point shooters that Tennessee has thus far in this early season. He has really developed the long-range game. Five three-pointers now on the season for the big man. He's really had to take a off-the-bench role into an everyday, I've got a score role. And he's done a great job, but a good response other end, Junior Clay. Junior Clay taking advantage of the size by Zakai Ziegler. Kind of muscled him down there, bullied him a little bit. Tennessee looking to answer now. Vescovi three off the mark. And a foul inside. That's an offensive call. Looks like on Plopsic. They'll go Golden Eagle way. Kamwa, man, I'm telling you, he's got the, you know, he, he, he's also playing with a lot of confidence as well. You know, Sakai Ziegler did exactly what he was supposed to do, get into the heart of the paint, make the defense collapse, pass it out to Santi, who had the assist to Olivier Kamwa. It has been night and day type of feel for Olivier Kamwa from being that role player looking really sharp, adding that three-pointer to his arsenal. It's a credit to the development plan for Rick Barnes and his staff. Offensive board here swatted back. Huntley Hatfield Give it to see the ball back. You know, I like, really like the game plan. I love the game plan from Coach Pelfrey because if you start to notice, Andy, they are taking advantage of the undersized guards that UT has on the defensive end. That's the second time that the guards from UT have been posted up and played big boy bully basketball. You know, fortunately enough for Tennessee, you know, Tennessee Tech did not put it in. But I like that game plan. Go after them on the defensive end. There's Victor Bailey Jr. will fire another one. That's off the mark. Vescovi, offensive board. Vescovi kicks it back out. Tennessee still struggling from behind the arc. Just the one make of 13 tries from Kumwa. Vescovi tries again off the mark, but Huntley Hatfield, that is an easy putback. Yeah, Johnny on the spot. And if you're Coach Belfry right now with the arms crossed, that's the thing that you can't have. You know, you, you are forcing Tennessee to not shoot the ball well from the perimeter because of... Tennessee talking things over, up three here late in the first half, 25-22 against in-state opponent Tennessee Tech. And Steve, the storyline so far from a Tennessee offense right now, one of 14 from behind the arc there. This has been a good three-point shooting team all season, but just really haven't been able to buy anything. Yeah, and he's very reminiscent of last Saturday. And, you know, you hate to keep harping about that, but... You, you, you just certainly hope that Tennessee pulls out of that. You know, you, you look at the fact that they shot 5 of 28 last Saturday. A paltry 17.9% make in terms of the three-point look, looks. And, and right here, you got someone that you don't necessarily count on to make threes, and it's Olivier Kumwa that makes the first one. Not Kennedy Chandler, not Vescovi, not VJ, but Olivier Kumwa. 
And right now, they're shooting 7%. So, you know, it, it's gotten a little bit worse. It's a team that shot six and a half three-point field goals made a game last year. That was near the bottom of the nation. This year, they've stepped that up to 10, including a record-breaking 17 in their season opener. So they've shot well this season, but a lot of options are able to do so. Just haven't really gotten them in rhythm yet. And let's give, you know, the Golden Eagles some credit as well. You know, they play very, very well defensively. They closed out. They play gap help side defense. So give them some credit as well. Hustle play there from Daniel Ramsey. Running the other way as Petway takes the contact and will head to the line for two. Wow. Ramsey, what great hustle, man. Just, you know, Kenny Chandler kind of tripped over his feet there, lost control of the ball. And Ramsey just dove in there and got his hands in, made a great pass. So the Eagles have come to play. Absolutely. All-out effort there from Daniel Ramsey, the sophomore forward out of Cordell, Georgia. Transfer out of Xavier. He's had some issues with his health there at the Musketeers, so you hope he's good. Looks like just took a, a hard tumble there. Hard tumble, hard tumble. What a serious effort play. That will give Tennessee Tech a chance to go up with two free throws. And unfortunately for, you know, Ramsey is that he's got to come out now. You know, you had that great hustle play get nicked up a little bit and you got to come out but hopefully he's going to be good and get back into the game yeah, uh, all injuries with the head you have to take serious it's double a concussion protocols as he did take a shot there for kennedy chandler off the pass and now petway had a chance to potentially give tennessee tech the lead there this is the first one so they'll go for the tie What's interesting as well, you know, you look at one of those particulars that keeps a, a, a lesser opponent into a basketball game like this is that this will be their eighth free throw. Conversely, Tennessee has yet to get to the free throw line, and we only have four minutes left in this first half. Tennessee will likely take their first ones here as Chandler goes hard to the basket. Good drive from the freshman. And you're right, first free throws of the afternoon for Tennessee here very late in the first half. So, Andy, what do you do? You know, we talked about Tennessee Tech and what they've got to do to stay in a game like this. If you're Coach Barnes, what do you got to do? For me, I think you got to start inside out. You know, obviously you're shooting one for 14. You're shooting at a 7% clip from the three-point line. That just tells me you got to get Fulkerson more involved. You got to get Kunwa. You got to get uh, Brandon Huntley Hatfield more involved. Start on the inside and go inside out. That opens up the perimeter, and I think you knock down more shots. Surely to see some sort of adjustments, particularly second half, after they're able to talk things over. Get their first look at this Tennessee Tech defense. Like you mentioned, this is a stingy Golden Eagle side. There's right to the rim, adjust, gets it to go, and the foul. Golden Eagles tie it up with a chance to take the lead. Yeah, Kenny White, man, I'm telling you, that, that is a strong, just straight line cut using his offhand there and got fouled and put it in. Great move by Kenny White. And Kenny White, a technical freshman forward out of Madisonville, Kentucky. Had six starts a season ago before season-ending injury. Had 13 points in that debut, so a bright star that Tennessee Tech is really trying to get going, and they've done so. 5.2 points per game, 14 minutes so far, and that was a fantastic finish. And now Tennessee Tech has the lead. Tennessee Tech, I'm telling you, we said it before, but they came to play. Didn't even have a shoot-around today. I mean, the, the pregame was their shoot-around. Able to enjoy Thanksgiving at Cookville. Bust up this morning as Kennedy Chandler finally gets it to go. Took a couple of bounces. Just sat up there for a while. But finally you know, rolled in. What amazes me with Kennedy Chandler is the fact that he, you know, whether he makes or misses Andy, it's the same reaction. You know, he shot that, bounced around several times, and he just goes right back down the floor. You know, it wasn't the rah rah sis move by. It wasn't, I'm, I'm, you know, we get the crowd fired up. It was, I'm going to get back and play defense because that's what I do. He gave that look like, finally, finally. It was an uh, unconventional make, but we'll take it. We're going to take it. Finally getting one to fall from a guard, Tennessee. They're two for 15. Not down for long. Katie Chandler gets it to go. Much needed. Yeah, he's too good. You know, he's too good to shoot air balls from the three-point line. The thing you really like about Kennedy Chandler is that he got the, the, the layup, got fouled, and went to the line, got his first couple points there, 
and that led to him being more confident shooting the three. And then you got somebody like Fulkerson again. You start on the inside, work your way inside out, and good things are going to happen. That's what you were talking about, Steve. Heading in the paint, trying to get Fulkerson, the six-year man, going, and then a turnover, other end for the Golden Eagles, gives it back to Tennessee. Basketball's really in. It's not that difficult. Okay. One thing's not going well, you try something else. The definition of insanity is is trying, you know, you're doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Well, you know, get the ball on the inside and play inside out. Now look at what they're doing right here. Volke in the paint, back to back, post moves from number 10, gets it to go. Yeah, it just needs more touches. It's just that easy. You just need to have your, your all SEC caliber player touch the ball. Around campus, but nice for everyone to take some time, reflect, yeah. some nice couch time, I'm sure. If you're watching, eating those Thanksgiving leftovers, it's it's a good weekend, Steve. It's a good weekend. And if you want to do a couple more promos, man, I'm going to do some Black Friday shopping over here. <laughs> you can you know? head out on us. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to. I got my phone here. You know? There you go. You know, I'm going to use my phone, maybe do a little shopping. I'll get back with you here in just a second. Andy, what size do you wear? I'll take care of it. I was just about to, just about to ask you the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Steve are going shopping after this game. <laughs> Two minutes to go. Tennessee up six. Now, Steve, we've talked about this before. Do you have a favorite Thanksgiving side you want to mention? A little shout out. Yeah, so, you know, my Thanksgiving side, it's not Thanksgiving until I have cranberry sauce. And I don't care what you say. I don't care what your uh, affinity in terms of political, you know, your prowess and all that. It's got to be cranberry sauce. you got to have the cranberry. I'll say the Brock family makes some good mac and cheese. So we're we're going to ride with the, the original classic. Nothing too crazy. Just straight to the point. Mm, I like it. I like it. Casey down there on the sideline, what, what, what's the Funderburg family working with? I like mashed potatoes with peas on top, which I know a lot of people <laughs> don't like peas, but I really enjoy that every Thanksgiving. Hey, it's a unique one, and we won't judge you, but not my choice, but it sounds good. More for me. <laughs> we will not judge you, Casey. I mean, you know, if you, if you want to eat green peas and mashed potatoes, <laughs> that, that's your business. Tennessee Tech trying to battle. Tennessee on a bit of a run here. In the paint, out for Davidson. Nice pump fake, a little runner. Got wow. it to go. Fantastic finish from Davidson. You know, Tennessee Tech's ball movement this first half has been absolutely spectacular. They're not settling for the first opportunity. Why settle for a good look when you can get a great one with one extra pass? Mescovi, top of the key. Just about had it poked out. Clay playing some solid defense. Three-time All-OVC candidate. Bomb on top of the key, and he's fouled by Diara. Now, again, in that entire possession, you didn't have a post touch. You know, Kumwa technically plays the post, but he was out beyond the three-point line. Again, you get the ball into the post. You got someone with the girth of Brandon Huntley Hatfield. Let him sit down in the post. If he gets double teamed, he'll kick it back out to you. How about for Tennessee, Jemai Mayshack getting some good minutes here in this Friday battle. The inbounds it. Here's Vesky, lobs it up for Kamwa. Hit the deck, but got it back out, kept it alive. Here's Vescovy, left wing, taking on Diara, and couldn't get it to go. The rim did not favor the Bulls this time around. Other way, Junior Clay, oh. what a move! Dice can't finish, but a wow. put back from Kenny White. What a move from Junior Clay, man. You know, Junior Clay with a little <laughs> hesitation, two guys blow by. He didn't get the fortuitous bounce. But, it, but his teammate was there to back him. That was about. I don't know. <laughs> but you, 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 he's, he's dishing the ball. He's dishing the ball. Absolutely, as uh, leads the team in assists, six point four assists per game. As Clay and Davidson combined for nineteen assists in that way to get Slipscomb not a single turnover. Santi might have been signaling you. Maybe he's about to make something happen right yeah, here. Yeah. Still looking for that first three. Ten seconds. Chandler, and it looked like he stepped out of bounds on that baseline. Yeah, I think he did. And, and I think they were trying to get Kennedy Chandler to go around the left side. Santi was going to flatten out to the corner. They were going to try to knock down the three to end the half. But if you're Tennessee Tech, you're down two with a chance to possibly lead with seven seconds left. 
Huge set here for the Golden Eagles. Within two. It's their lead man, Junior Clay, taking it down. Three on the clock. Clay fires. Bang. Gets it to go at the buzzer. Tennessee Tech with the lead headed to the half. Wow. Wow. What a half for Tennessee Tech. What ice, a half. Ice in the veins, Steve, from Junior Clay. Wow. You know, we just talked about Junior Clay, and you stop, pop, and drop. I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. And with Coach John Pelfrey on the sidelines, we'll sit it to Casey Funderburg. Coach, you guys are going into halftime up on number 15th ranked Tennessee. What this to a you know top 15 ranked Tennessee team? They're not going to back down. They're not going to quit. No, absolutely not. This is a team that went on the road against a Memphis side. That's another top 25 team in the nation. Didn't get the outcome they wanted, but very competitive with a really good Memphis side. Obviously, their coach, wealth of experience playing in these venues. He's got a lot of knowledge you can give to these guys. Yeah, and again, it's an in-state battle. You know, you, you take it to someone like Memphis. Obviously, I believe the score was 89-65. They came in on the short end of that. But man, they were in that ball game for a good long time. So, you know, they're they're not gonna be they're not gonna back down, they're not gonna be intimidated coming into this raucous environment. Tennessee Tech will play eight of the eleven Division I schools across the state of Tennessee at their schedule this season. They'll take on Chattanooga after this one for the second time. So really heading around the state trying to prove their mark in terms of teams here in the state. Tennessee here's Vescovy wide open and a great way to kick off second half. Yeah, that's you know inside out basketball. It starts with a touch from Olivier Kumwa and it leads to a three. On the other end, Coach Barnes is shaking his head because BJ Victor Bailey got lost in the shuffle and did not defend. Trading three pointers, a swat from Sela on the defensive end for Tennessee Tech. Keyshawn Davidson open Diara. Going with Kamwa, and Olivier Kamwa will force the turnover. Yeah, Pelfrey's not going to be happy about that. You know, you, you've got someone of that size that's not a three-point shooter that turns the ball over. But if you look on this end, Santiago takes that one rhythm dribble, steps right into it, knocks down the three. It's best to be able to get his first three-pointer of the afternoon. One for five now from behind the arc. Tennessee trying to... A little bit more efficient from that three-point line. Here's Fulkerson. Bob was there, and another offensive board for the Vols. Is that something else that Tennessee can utilize? Fulkerson is so good and so adept at using that hesitation dribble up and under that he gets two defenders leaving a volunteer on the other side to clean it up. Balls back up one. Here's Diara. A little pump fake step up. Kiss off the glass. Wow. Did not realize the banks were open the day after. Are the banks open today? I, I guess they are, right? They are here at Thompson Bowling <laughs> Arena. Mamadou will kiss off the glass. Not bad for the big fella. He's hit a three, too. He's got the range. First year man here at Tennessee Tech from Cincinnati. He's had a lot of experience with the Bearcats. And Ves Vescovy, no doubt, he's on a roll now, two for two to start the second half. Yeah, just need to see one go in. And Vescovy, I'm telling you, man, once he sees one go in, he gets as big as the ocean that basket does. He's got six this half, now eight, but another response from the Golden Eagles. They get it to go. Back and forth action here, Steve. Wow, Junior Clay, Santiago, Vescovy, man, they got the ultimate green light, and they're both knocking down shots. This could be. See what else he has up his sleeve. Here's Kennedy Chandler looking to get things going second half. Diara was there, put a hand on it. Junior Clay, a little three on one for Tennessee Tech. Other way, great defense from Santi. Draws the foul, but he limits the bucket. Yeah, limits the bucket. Kudos to Amadou Silla or Sila for running the floor. Getting to the free throw line. Santiago coming off the down screen by Fulkerson, knocking it down in rhythm. That's what they need from their leading scorer. This could be eight points, three for eight from the floor, five assists as well. They'll try to get the hot hand for a Tennessee team, still trailing the second half. Tennessee's fairly fortunate, Andy, that they're not down further. You know, Tennessee Tech has been to the line ten times, knocking down six of them. But if they were shooting a little bit better from the line, bigger lead. Tennessee haven't had those type of opportunities from the free throw line yet. Just two tries. It's been all Tennessee Tech from the charity stripe. The Golden Eagles 
retain a one point lead. That's going to be out to Fulkerson. And it's back out to his guard. Two man movement here. Fulkerson in the paint. Can't get it to go. Took some contact. No foul call. Other way. Golden Eagles goes clay. A little up and under. Yeah, you know, I'm with you. I thought that he got hit from behind there, but play on. Again, Tennessee Tech takes advantage of a rebound and knocks the shot down. Vescovy with the green light, fires again, another foul on the floor. But Vescovy heating up, Junior Clay says, I'll one up you. Yeah, I'm going to heat up too. Yeah, Junior Clay, man, going down the floor, straight line drive, little finger roll, scoop and score. Clay, 12 points, 9 assists, a career-high 5 steals in the win against Lipscomb on Tuesday. He's a pesky defender as well as a crafty offensive mind. Here's Fulkerson going to work with Sela in the paint. What a battle, and Fulkerson this time will take a whistle and head to the line. You know, if you are Coach Barnes, one of the things that you want to see again is Fulkerson catch the ball on that particular block because it allows him to take a couple of crab dribbles, spin over that natural shoulder. Also, it allows him to get someone to get into foul trouble. First one good from Fulkerson. Yeah, look look at Fulkerson. He, you know, he catches the ball right there. Now look, you, you catch it here, little shoulder fake, and then you got the, the, the up and under drawing foul trouble from Amadou Sila. See Folky nine points, shooting 50% from the floor, four rebounds. They've gone to him in the paint when the three-point shot hasn't been falling. He's been delivering. Folky a little bit of an injury at the beginning of the season, missed the season opener, but now really starting to look like he didn't miss that time. He's starting to really dial in. Yeah, and he's not in great game shape yet. You know, it's one thing to run sprints while all the other guys are conditioning basketball-wise. So he's not in great game shape. So look for him to get better and better as the season progresses. So we see playing high-pressure defense. They've gone back to a man-to-man -man here. Davidson off the screen. Wide open Junior Clay. Top of the key. Couldn't roll it to go. The board from Bescovy. He had nine of those against North Carolina. Probably the most wide open junior Clay's been, and he didn't knock that one down. Old design play from John Pelford. Clay couldn't quite grab the points. Golden Eagle still up one. Here's Plopsich. Big man in the paint. Going up again. Couldn't quite drop it in. Scramble at the baseline. Last touch is going to be Tennessee. Uros for me. You, you gotta just go right up with it. There was that sense of hesitation, but he's also playing with that chip on his shoulder. You know, we talked about Sakai Ziegler with the chip on his shoulder. Well, he's not gonna back down. You know, this is almost big brother, little brother with Tennessee and Tennessee Tech. Little brother's here to play. Clay leads the OVC in assists per game. He was second last year in points per game. He can get a double-double in several different ways. And has a chance when it's all said and done. He's already played three years at Tennessee Tech. He can really find himself in the record books. I think he will. Cross court pass that time from Clay. Vescovy dives for it, picked up from Chandler. Ziegler moving up the court. Ziegler catches it top of the key, drives in, found Huntley Hatfield with no one around but right through the legs. Yeah, you know. That is a really good pocket pass, and in time, Brandon Huntley Hatfield will stop right there on the box and wait for that pass because he's going to be wide open. His defender was helping on Zakai Ziegler. He'll catch that and put that in in time, just not ready for that just now. Tennessee still winning the turnover battle, 12 for Tennessee Tech, 7 for the Volunteers' side. Golden Eagle still leading by one. Will post move, try to extend that lead. Huntley Hatfield crashing the boards. Balls the other way. Vescovy corner inside Fulke. Or feed the sixth year man, and he draws contact and will head back to the line. You know, we talked about it, Andy, ad nauseum at this point. You know, if you're Coach Barnes, you want the ball to go inside to John Fulkerson. Good things are going to happen when he touches the ball. Again, he catches the ball right there on the block. Defender catches up. Might have gotten away with his 
second, third foul there. But good things are going to happen when Fulkerson catches the ball on the low post. Now, Folky playing in his 136th career game in an orange and white uniform. That ties him with Josh Richardson, a VFL legend for third all-time in program history. Wow, you know, you, you talk about the likes of Josh Richardson. Those are Iron Men that have played at an exceptionally high level for, for you know, game after game after game when they're counted on to do it most. At the moment, he is six shy for tying all-time leader Wayne Chisholm program history for most games played, which if he sticks out the rest of the season, he certainly can get there. What a feed by Goldman finding Junior Clay. Eagles retake the lead. Nice set piece there from Coach Belfry. Again, you talk about them being well coached. And Junior Clay picks Fulkerson's pocket. Other way, bounce pass entry to Petway. Rise above Kennedy Chandler. The swat from the freshman. Escovi up ahead. Here's Fulke in the paint. Escovi dials one up. Can't grab it to go. Back and forth. Fast pace. Here's Clay. No. And maybe now Santi will slow it down. Yeah, I think you're going to slow it down, run your offense. Good looks by Santi and Clay there. Neither one of them fall. Those two have been the go-tos on offense here in the second half for either side. Tennessee's 0 for their last five. Entry pass tipped out of play. It'll stay Tennessee Vols' way. Yeah, you're very fortunate as you're Santiago because most times you're not going to jump to pass unless it's one of those swing passes to the corner where you're getting over a defender. You don't want to jump up in the air with nowhere to particularly go. The deep baseline throwing for Tennessee. Just such a different feel. Just this time a season ago, Tennessee, eighth largest margin of victory on an opponent. That 103-49 win against this Golden Eagles team with a lot of the same players still on this side. Obviously a much different Tennessee Tech side. Much different, and, you know, we really haven't talked about the fact that Tennessee should be much deeper, but you're missing Josiah Jordan-James. You're missing the you're missing Powell, who's a knockdown three-point shooter as well. Turnover from Deontay Wood goes one-on-one -on -one with Ziegler, but the presence from Sakai Ziegler and Wood fumbles it out of play. Yeah, you know, he's that little pest, man. You, you think you got a clean avenue to get to the rim, you're going to bully ball him, but he's the little pest that gets in there and causes havoc. But, Steve, you do make a good point. A lot of pieces missing for Tennessee as uh, Josiah Jordan-James uh, still trying to work his way back in the lineup, dealing with a bit of a hand injury, have some sickness going around. No Justin Powell today either from what we've seen. He's available, but just about doubtful, still trying to get his way back. Huntley Hatfield, though, a good move, and they'll take that from the big freshman. That's an NBA body. I mean, you know, as this kid learns the game, he's going to be absolutely special. Uh, you catch the ball on the block, you, you reverse it, spin move, and go to the baseline and put it in. The crowd here at TBA starting to get into it. Their side up one, and a jump ball on the court. And I think it's going to be ruled a jump ball. It'll be Tennessee Tech's way still. Coach Pelfrey's not mad at the official. He's mad at his guy for, for dribbling the ball into that dead spot there. When you're going to get trapped there, you cannot have that ball against that sideline. It'll be Petway to throw it in. He gets it to Diara. Diara now top of the key, working on Kamwa. Goes to the Davidson. Wide open, Goldman. Diara. Some space to shoot it, didn't take it, gives it back to Davidson. Working it all the way back around the Petway. Shot clock expires as it goes off the mark. Yeah, Diara should have taken that shot. He was wide open. Look at the moves from Ziegler. Draws the foul. Almost got to go. Nifty little move oh, from Sakai Ziegler. Sakai Ziegler, man. He is just a spark plug of activity. You know, hesitation, in and out dribble, crossover, getting to the rim. I mean, look at this right here. Boom, little hesitation, left hand, crossover to the right, absorbing the contact. Now, I will say, I kind of agree with Mamadou, Mamadou Diallo, man. He went with that principle of verticality, went straight up. 
Could have been a no call. You know, one of those back and forth 50, the toughness of Ziegler being able to drive into the paint. Just standing at 5'9 is the freshman guard from Long Island, New York. 5'9 is the shortest ball on scholarship since back in the 80s, since 1980. But he plays fearless like he is one of those small forwards driving in and slashing plays fearless and, and a lot of times when you have someone that plays again with that type of moxie you, you have everyone else that rallies you know they're looking for that leader on the floor especially at that point guard position other guys will follow suit and play with chips on their shoulders as well a fantastic story didn't have any offers until a really solid aau showing this summer and coach bard says he's already one of the more mature players on this team and is doing things the right way and those were some big free throws. Tennessee back up three. Golden Eagles looking to respond. Look for Tennessee Tech to be very patient. Look for them to get the shot that they want. They're going to pass up a good shot to get a great one. There's Wood in the paint. Victor Bailey Jr. stuffs it back. Other way. Ball's looking to run. Wide open is Kumwa. Top of the key. And yeah, Tennessee will back it out and reset the offense. Yeah, they're going to run that action here. Look to get the ball in the paint here. Chandler going head-to-head -head with Wood. Almost lost his balance. Another feed into the paint. This one is Kumwa. Just about lost it. Ziegler's there. Inside the Hatfield. Got it. Assist to Ziegler. Man, I'm telling you, he's doing everything. And this young fella, Brendan Hundley Hatfield, stepping up in this game tight moment. Only a timeout for Tennessee Tech and John Pelfrey. They'll want to talk about it. Tennessee on a six. One here, Steve. Tennessee trying to get that rhythm and push here to the final whistle. Yeah, and, and I think that little push has come from the little guy, Zakai Ziegler. He's had his fingerprints all over the last few minutes of this ball game. You know, whether it's defending at a high level, thwarting an easy layup opportunity from Tennessee Tech that, that caused them to turn it over, or last second dishing the ball off to Brandon Huntley Hatfield for an easy layup. This guy that you're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, had his coming out party last week. And it wasn't just one of those parties that I'm going to come and go away. I'm here to stay, says the Kazi. Absolutely, and that's the case for a lot of these freshmen. Kennedy Chandler had a, a coming out party, breakout weekends. Teams are going to have to start preparing for these guys. So it'll be interesting to see how some of these ball freshmen adapt to a scouting report. There's Kennedy Chandler. Oh, oh. It down. Wow. Okay, young fella. Rise above Kennedy Chandler. That'll get the crowd going. But a good response, other end, Daniel Ramsey. Yeah, good wraparound pass to find Daniel Ramsey right there. Well, Steve, did you know Chandler had those ups? I, I didn't know he could do it like that. Well, scrubbage on the court. Junior Clay now pacing the Golden Eagles down the court. Wow, man, he, he missed a golden opportunity. Daniel Ramsey was wide open in the paint. And Davidson a little bit out of control, lost it. And Tennessee takes over, up five, and will slow things down now. Look for Tennessee once again to get something in the post here. Find something going to the basket. If you're a guard, get something set up for Brandon Huntley Hatfield right there. There's Huntley Hatfield working on Goldman. Turn around, Huntley Hatfield. Field, good to go. He's five for five today. Well, it's just, that's just too easy. You know, you try to muscle him out, try to push him away, and he's got that sweet touch that he can take that pull-up jump shot. Huntley Hatfield now with 10 in the game. One of his best outings so far in his young freshman career. Davidson tangled up. Folky playing good defense. Junior Clay now on Ziegler. Big matchup. Oh, Sakai Ziegler's locking him up. Five on the shot clock. Goldman fires. Can't connect. Olke will slow it down out of Vescovy. Less than ten to go. Tennessee, they've made four of their last four attempts. But it's been the youth. It's been the youth right here. It's been Ziegler. Chandler, Chandler, and Huntley Hatfield. Huntley Hatfield going to work again. Folky approves. 
He's now six for six. Let the big fella eat, man, on the inside, man. It's still Thanksgiving feast for the big fella from Tennessee. 12 points for Huntley Hatfield. That's tied for the team high. It's a breakout party for him and a sweet drive. Keyshawn Davidson. Tennessee Tech's not going away. No, they're not going away. And Keyshawn Davidson, straight line cut, left-handed finish, man. Now, those are the type of baskets, if you're Coach Pelfrey, that you need to stay in a ball game. Now, what's the play call here, Steve? Huntley Hatfield again. This time stops. They keep trying to feed the keep big fan. You go inside out here. Now, if you're, if you're Huntley Hatfield, you don't settle. You punish the guy, mouse in the house, try to get him all the way to the basket. And that is his first miss of the afternoon. A great run from Huntley Hatfield. And a great stretch that puts Tennessee up seven, and then a turnover from Davidson. Yeah, and he looks a little winded right there. You know, that's that's a winded type of effort there from Huntley Hatfield. But, man, you talk about an ovation that he's going to get going out of the game. Kennedy Chandler, rise up, young fella. Wow. Whew. Almost lost it there at the top, but no doubt he was coming down with that 11 points for the freshman four assists two rebounds got the crowd amped up and it takes an escalator to get me up that high <laughs> man that's young legs right there steve i think you can still put it through sweet drive again kennedy chandler it's the youth movement from the volunteers man chandler zakai and huntley hatfield they have played absolutely marvelously down the stretch run here. Tennessee really running now, trying. Great some separation. Here's Ziegler, three. Can't quite get it. I think the roof would come off of this place <laughs> if Zakai made that one. Tennessee, they've had the hot stretch. Six of their last eight have gone through. Still just four for 20 from three-point line. There's one driving in. Vescovy, Fulkerson, might have been a combo block there. Good defense from the balls. Now don't get it twisted. Tennessee's defensive intensity has really stepped up markedly over the last several minutes, which has led to some offensive explosivity. A feed in from Vescovy. That'll be a foul on the inside. Both sides will have some time to talk about it, but Tennessee just absolutely cruising here midway through the second half. It's the Kennedy Chandler Show, the freshman show on a game and game basis coach Barnes went to him before that North Carolina said you know Brandon this is going to be a good game for you we're going to need to utilize this and he likes to take each game as a different personality so at this point this may be another Huntley Hatfield game yeah I think so you know had a career high 23 minutes against North Carolina so coach is having more and more confidence in the young fella he deserves to play I mean you carve out a niche like that on this basketball team by doing the dirty work by, by getting the offensive rebounds then all of a sudden your teammates have more and more confidence in you and it leads to easier buckets on the offensive end the freshmen for Tennessee have been stellar here late in the second half those are the guys you look to to really create these stretches they've scored the team's last 14 points to give them this nine point separation yeah you know it's been a huge explosion here already account for 45 percent of the team scoring and now a little veteran action it's Mamwa off the jam yeah coach Pelfrey came out of that timeout in a little two three matchup zone but then all of a sudden what do you got Kennedy let's do it again okay. <laughs> that's just too easy that's just too easy he's fired up ball nations fired up standing ovation from TBA the response there from Sela. But Tennessee bringing the energy. Kennedy Chandler has been that ignition. Yeah. Two big jams now. Yeah. And the crowd gets into it as well. You know, Tennessee plays off of that intensity from the crowd. And that's the first time the crowd's really, really gotten into the basketball game. Now Ziegler will throw it. Ziegler will slow it down. Tennessee, nine steals in the game. As they have been efficient. That ball control, shot clock winding down. Vescovy couldn't quite. He's a little bit limpish there at the end of that. Maybe caught him a bit off guard. Yeah, they look kind of out of sorts there on that offensive possession. You know, they look to slow it down, settle it, settle it down, but they look out of sort a little bit. Golden Eagles not out of it yet. Still a lot of action, about six minutes. They're down double digits now, and a good finish. 
Kenny White Jr. getting it to go. He's had a good game. Kenny's had a great game. Again, you know, a little left-handed finish, left side drive there. Back to nine, back to single digits. Siegler left wing. Into Fulkerson. Going up with Sela. Amadou said no help right here. I don't want your help. Let's see if that pays off for Amadou. One on one. No foul call on the contact. Folky again got it to go. Yeah, Amadou may really want to rethink that. that. When you've got an all SEC type player that you're defending, you know, I like the moxie of him saying no help. But man, sometimes what's best for the team is that we send a double defender. Well, Folky used to going up against the biggest of the bigs across the Southeastern Conference, across the nation, and he has 14 points. A really good matchup down in the paint between Sela and Fulkerson all afternoon. Turn around from Sela, put back Deontay Wood. He cashes it in and one. So you had four guys really racing around that perimeter trying to thwart an offensive shot by Tennessee Tech as we take a look here. John Fulkerson not settling. Getting the rebound, and look at that high loft. But you look at Kumwa on the other end. Kumwa's got to box out. And one opportunity good from Deontay Wood. Now has five points. And Tennessee Tech has put it back to a very reasonable eight. Four and a half to go. Ziegler driving in. Couldn't quite finish it. Got a good look. Junior Clay looking to capitalize the other end, but Ziegler comes in and <laughs> pokes it out. Zakai Ziegler, I, I, I'm telling you, he, he, when you have that type of stick to itiveness, if you will, you know, he fell on the other end trying to convert a tough layup, didn't quit on the play, and ran all the way back and got a piece and kept Tennessee Tech from, from scoring there. There's no wonder why you, you have Chandler and Ziegler and Vescovi in right now with only 425 left. Huntley Hatfield back in the game as well. Big drive from Diara. Couldn't quite get it to go. Board from Ramsey and a foul call on the way up on Tennessee. Johnny on the spot there, you know. Santiago had no choice really but to foul there in that situation to foul Ramsey because he was a you know you couldn't box him out much bigger guy we'll put Ramsey at the line first one good well tomorrow night SEC football final has you covered with the biggest stories of the day and breakdowns of all the games Dari Noqua hosts along with Chris, Do Chris Doring and Benjamin Watson this week fun begins after Clemson and South Carolina right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. It's one app, one tap. Six-point game again. Yeah, now Andy, just a second ago, the crowd was into it. Tennessee's up by 13 points, but you look at a well-coached basketball team in Tennessee Tech that didn't quit. Now they're right back within an arm's reach at six points. A gritty Tennessee Tech side trying to get their first win over the Bulls since 1996. But a smooth finish from Kamwa, keeping some separation again. With the assist from Huntley Hatfield, who I'm telling you, look out, Vol fans. You're going to love this guy in the future to come. That is a good duo. Kamwa and Huntley Hatfield. Folky's been good as well. Diara for three. That's a bad shot. If you're Diara, you're being defended by Huntley Hatfield. Well beyond the three-point line. That is a bad shot. Deskey now with seven rebounds. Career-high nine against North Carolina. Come off from the wing. No doubt about it for the big man. Automatic now. Olivier Kamwa, man. Step into that shot with a rhythm. Knock it down. 14 points from Kamwa, and he hasn't missed a shot this afternoon. Two for two from three. Six for six from the floor. In the paint, Ramsey. Vescovy comes from behind, snatches it away. Other end, Vescovy for Kamwa! Don't do us like that, Santi. Great heads up basketball. I thought he's going to give it to Chandler in the corner. The vision from Santi. Finds his guy in a huge slam. 
But yet again, another crowd silencer. Tennessee Tech, they haven't let it get in their head, these big slams. Yeah, Daniel Ramsey, you know, great finish on the other end. Keeps you within an arm's distance. Now it's critical if you're Tennessee Tech and Coach John Pelfrey that you get some stops. Come on, hot hand, 16 points. And a little deflection from Junior Clay. Just about got it as he will head to another quick media timeout. As Tennessee with the lead. Check out the hops. Chandler and Kamwa, a little combo slam action. Last one is the best. A little alley in the second half. Who right, goes to that young man? You're right, Steve. Just one for four from three points, so he's trying to transition into more. Let's drive in. Let's get to the line. Let's get some steals. Four steals for him as well, and he's had these nice little fast break opportunities. Get to show off to the crowd. A little high flying action. He's showing that full arsenal. Showing the full arsenal, man. He's got more than one bullet in his weapon, man, <laughs> because, you know, 15 points. Okay, that's great, right? That's great. Six of 13. Hadn't shot the ball well from the three-point line, but then you go down the stat line. Two defensive rebounds, four assists, four steals. Just does it all. He's just getting started as well. Not the start maybe Tennessee would want in this game. They'll have a chance to go back, watch the film, but still so many positive aspects from a lot of the pieces on your team. It's early in the season still. Early in the season. As he's got to get a shot off. Very fortunate that there was a kicked ball there because as we saw it, there was two seconds left on the shot clock. Now it gets reset to 20. So that's very bad luck if you're Tennessee Tech because you had Tennessee with two seconds left. Now it gets reset. Every second is going to matter here for Tennessee Tech. Down 11 again, trying to get themselves back into it. It has been a really hard-fought battle for this Golden Eagles side through and through. Tennessee's being very, very smart and wise and judicious with the basketball right here. Vescovi pronounced that one. Got it to go. Yeah, yeah. That might have been the nail in the coffin right there. His third of the day. Folky grabs a block after the whistle. That's going to be a foul to send Junior Clay to the line. Junior Clay, man, you know, great, great basketball player. Look for him to really do more and more the rest of this season. But Tennessee was very, again, judicious for their shot selection, knowing that Santiago's coming around, curling that screen. Great wide open three. Santiago Vescovi. It's 11 points now for Santi, and officially now five balls in double figures. Like I said, Steve, a lot of players you could highlight for this Tennessee team, and they're all doing things here today. They're all doing things, but for the most part, it's been the youngsters. I know John Fulkerson's had his fingerprints all over, all over this game, but it's been the youngsters. Tennessee up 11, a little full-court press action. Tennessee Tech, a minute and a half. Ziegler just about gave it up. Junior Clay has got the pickpocket attribute, that's for sure. He's one of the best in the OVC at stealing those balls, stealing it away. Yeah. Now, Coach Barnes he is going to be irate with Zakai Ziegler. And you just take a look here. This is where you don't want to be no. if you're Zakai Ziegler. You know, you, you've done a lot of good things. But you've got to give the ball up there, okay? You, you can't play hero ball and say, man, I can get around this defender. On this collegiate level, that doesn't work this way. At the end of the day, Ziegler's still a freshman. He might be mature freshman. Coach Barnes is able to lead on, but still going to make those freshman mistakes, especially in the early going. Clay, a little floater. Some life for Tennessee Tech. Junior Clay, 14 points. Clay says I'm not done yet, man. And we'll get the game clock all figured out. Tennessee Tech down at 10. Another good fight for this Tennessee Tech side. I mentioned just night and day compared to a performance last year that I'm sure this side has already forgotten about, knowing that this is a brand new team. They really kept it close with the, a top 15 team in the nation. Yeah, you know, and this, this will bode well for Coach Pelfrey in future games against the Volunteers because, you know, another chance to recruit higher and higher players, better players, more stars. You know, they're going to remember this. That's to be having to launch it for Kamwa. 
and an easy little slam. Easy slam. <laughs> Santiago didn't panic when there was three guys there defending him. But they're really going to have to win basketball at a very high level. And he never gets rattled as well. You know, he could have easily panicked there and threw the ball away. But had the eyes up court, as you take a look at that stat line, 11, 7, and 7, that's fantastic to find Kumwa for the flush. The guy who took his off-season work, super serious, got into good shape, really changed up his diet a little bit. Coach Barnes said most improved over the summer, and he's really working at it because he's got to be a go-to guy. He's a veteran now. All of a sudden, you look up, you're an upperclassman. You're an upperclassman. And, 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 you know, because he played such a high level over the summer and changed his diet, you see the 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 uh, what, what he sowed over the summer. Now he's reaping. Other turnover for Tennessee Tech. Kamwa, though, lost track of it. 45 seconds to go. Davidson will drive it. Kamwa leaped over him. <laughs> you look at Coach wow. Barnes. I'm watching Coach <laughs> Barnes as Kumwa turns the ball over. Coach Barnes stands up and is getting ready to give him an ear pull. And now if you see him here, he's seated <laughs> because Kumwa hustled down and got a rejection on the other ear. Made up for it. He's laughing about it too. Tough turnover leads to a good swat on the other end. A deep three from Clay. Almost like a desperation launch. Just trying to get back into it. It goes in. Junior Clay. 19. Maybe that's been the problem. He was shooting too close. Uh, that's you right. Know? Too many drives. Too many easy looks. That's going to be a foul on Deontay Wood. Tennessee not in the bonus just yet. It's been a pretty cleanly played game on both sides. Neither team in the bonus right now. This is what you want to see if you're a basketball fan. Yeah, both sides being able to play their game, letting it go. Some physical post play all around. Some you know, threes that haven't gone in, have gone in and out, back and forth. Tennessee, they haven't quite been their best from the three point line, but they made up for it. Each team now with six threes. Tennessee, they've taken 23 of them. A lot of action in this one, and it was close generally throughout. Tennessee looks like they're. Going to be able to make it to the finish line, but it took a little stretch there by some freshman studs to kind of get them over the top. Yeah, it took some, some extra effort by the freshman studs that you uh, spoke of just now. But you, if you're Coach Pelfrey, one of the things that you take away from this game is that, A, we can play with anybody. Okay, we, we, we fought tooth and nail with the University of Memphis, a top 10 basketball program for, for a, you know, a, a large part of that game. Now, the game got away from them. Then you followed up with a victory against a tough-nosed Lipson team. Now you come into Rocky Top, and, and it's a 10-point margin right now. So you, you've got several positive things if you're Tennessee Tech and Coach Pelfrey that you take away from this. SB as well gets the second one to roll as Tennessee Tech will take on Chattanooga at home on Tuesday, a team they previously lost to on the road already this season. And they'll travel to Evansville and then Western Carolina next couple games for this Golden Eagle side. It's Tennessee, they've got a couple of big games on the horizon. They'll host Presbyterian and then they'll travel out to Colorado for a big game in Boulder. And then Texas Tech at Madison Square Garden. But most importantly is they are able to get this win in front of the home crowd. Thanksgiving weekend. Ten straight wins now all time in a row over Tennessee Tech. 3-0 and against in-state teams this season. Yeah, big time win after a Thanksgiving. Large crowd on hand. You give the ball fans.